welcome back everyone to our November hashtag hire me 2021 guest panel speaker series hosted by bcjobs.ca. So my name is Chelsea Sweeney and I'm the director of events here at BC Jobs and I'll be your host today or hostess. Um, every month we host one panel for this guest speaker series um, where we have three special guest speakers from various sectors join us for a QA and a on what's happening uh, in their industry and talk about hiring and hiring processes. So I'll tell you a little bit about BC Jobs here. So some of you might know BC Jobs is Western Canada's biggest online jobs board. And in addition to this guest speaker series, we also run other virtual events such as our Innovators podcast. We have a podcast. We also have virtual career fairs, although in 2022, we might be moving more to in-person career fairs, but we'll release more details on that soon. So we'll keep you all posted on that. Um, yeah. And we also have an immigration um, guest speaker series that we run a few times a year. The, the last one was early November and the next one will, will be in March, 2022. So feel free to come and join that and hear all about how to get hired in Canada. Okay, so before um, we get started here, I just wanted to let everybody in the audience know that you are free to type in your questions into the chat and we will get to them in a bit. So feel free to write any questions for our guest speakers here. And uh, also feel free to let us know like where you're from. Um, for those of you who are just coming in and, and missed my earlier comment, feel free to type in your city and what job you're looking for and what job position you're currently in. Okay. And Today, after we give our guest introductions um, and we have a few questions for our guest speakers, we're gonna run a little pitch event. So this is a great opportunity to sharpen your public speaking skills um, for this pitch event. Uh, I'll type some more instructions into the chat when, when we get started with that, but it's your chance to talk about yourself in 30 seconds, pitch yourself to our guest panelists here today. And the there is a prize. So the person with the best pitch will receive a 30 minute resume consultation from BC Jobs. And uh, I'll send an email out to the winner after the event. Um, we've been doing this since August and I've met several really great job candidates and helped them not only with their resume, but with their LinkedIn profile as well. So uh, feel free to join our pitch event today. Don't be shy. This is a great way to, you know, to get talking about yourself and prepare for all those virtual interviews you're gonna be having soon. Okay, so enough from me. We're gonna get started here with some panelist introductions. So I'm gonna pass the virtual mic over to Aaron Gerard, People Operations and Talent Manager at Spare. Aaron, welcome back to our panel. I know this isn't your first time on the panel with us. You joined us back in January and March this year. So it's great to have you back again and uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks so much, Chelsea. It's great to be here again. Um, I've done a few events with BC Jobs now and all of them have been amazing. And as we get more used to this whole virtual world, they've just gotten better and better. So shout out to you and your team. These have been amazing. Um, a little bit of background on me. Yes, uh, as Chelsea said, my name is Erin. I am from Spare. Um, background on me, um, I have worked in various different industries in recruitment and HR um, for engineering companies, mining companies, education, uh, manufacturing, all sorts of different companies. And I keep coming back to tech. There's nothing like tech. So if it's your first time getting into the world of tech and trying it out, um, I highly recommend it. There is no better place to work than tech, honestly. Um, so that's just my little pitch on tech in general. Um, and as for Spare, we are a SaaS company based in Vancouver. Um, our headquarters is in Vancouver, Canada, uh, but we're actually currently hiring all across Canada. Um, so for the last almost two years now, we've hired all across Canada. And um, we have a little bit of a hub in Toronto, but we also have team members in um, the Maritime provinces. We have a couple 
in Quebec. Um, now three more joining us in uh, Alberta. So we are all over the place, um, not to mention having team members that have moved during the pandemic to different provinces. So uh, if you're calling in from anywhere in Canada, um, we are hiring all across Canada. If you're calling in from international, um, we also do uh, work with a company called Deal um, to bring people into Canada to work for us. So lots of different ways uh, to get you to work with us. Um, so feel free to reach out to me. I'll pop my LinkedIn in the description at some point tonight. Um, background on SPARE and what we do as an organization. We work in transportation tech. So we're a SaaS company that helps other organizations run an on-demand transportation network. Um, so if you're thinking transportation operations, boring, we don't do any of that stuff. We don't do any of the operations stuff. We're like route optimization, making transit better, more effective. Um, so some really cool stuff that we're doing there. Um, shall I pass the mic? Awesome introduction, Erin. That's awesome that you're, you know, you're hiring across Canada and, and to know a little bit more about SPARE and, and what you guys do. So yeah, we'll pass the mic over to Naditza. Um, so everyone, I'll just give you a brief introduction. So this is Naditza uh, Sojaleva, Senior Recruiter at Hootsuite. Naditza, please uh, tell us a bit about your backstory. Yeah, hi. Um, wow, Erin, you've definitely done this before. <laughs> You're a pro. Um, okay, I'm Naditza. I work for Hootsuite. Uh, for those of you who don't know us, we are the pioneer and leader in social media management, Canadian-based company, which I love. Um, background on me, I've been here for three and a half years. I've recruited for anything under the go-to-market sun at Hootsuite. So that would be like customer success, sales, professional services, marketing, and then I've recently made the switch into tech recruitment. So now I am working with software developers. Um, but yeah, I mean, for us, we are a global company. We have over 10 offices. We are currently hiring everywhere for many different roles. I think there's over 90 roles posted at the moment. Um, so really in hyper growth mode in 2021 and continuing to grow. Um, yeah, I guess in terms of us, like we, what we do is we help companies manage their social media. It's mostly done to our one dashboard um, where customers can post, publish and schedule posts, but it goes way beyond that and gets super technical into like analytics and social listening and ads. And we have a couple different companies that we actually acquired this year that really like build out our solutions that we provide to our clients. That's who's sweet. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks for sharing that, uh, Naditza. Um, okay, I'm going to move over last but not least to Sarah Glynn, Talent Acquisition Partner at Traction On Demand. Sarah, tell us a bit about your background. Yeah, thank you so much for having us, Chelsea. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Sarah. Um, I joined Traction On Demand last January, so I'm part of the talent acquisition team. Um, specifically, I do recruit for our tech sales, so all the roles that fall under business development. Um, to tell you a little bit more about myself, my background is in tech recruitment. So I, I worked for an agency previously recruiting a lot of web developers. I also recruited in the marketing, communication, advertising sector prior to coming to Traction On Demand. Um, so I've been in recruitment for, for many years now. Um, it's an exciting space to be in. Traction On Demand is growing um, quite a bit right now. So for those of you who haven't heard of us, um, we are are BC born, um, headquartered in Burnaby, started out actually in Port Moody, and now we're global. Um, so we do have offices pretty much across Canada, Toronto, Montreal. Um, we have uh, off physical office spaces in Jaipur, and we're in the process of expanding in Australia and New Zealand right now, um, which is super, super exciting. Um, for those of you who aren't super familiar with what Traction does, um, so we're in the Salesforce ecosystem. And so really what we do is Traction comes in once the Salesforce licenses have been purchased. And our area of expertise really is in the configuration and implementation of the various Salesforce uh, technologies. So we work with so many different clients from the financial services sector to nonprofit, retail, manufacturing, all in the configuration and implementation of the Salesforce platform. Um, Traction On Demand also has a few product companies underneath the umbrella right now. Um, so our product companies are growing quite a bit um, at the moment. Cool. I didn't know that about Traction. Thanks for sharing, Sarah. 
All right, now that we've uh, got the introductions out of the way, and we all feel like we, we know you three a little bit more now. Um, I've got a few of my own questions that I'm going to ask today to get us started before we move over to our pitch events. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with Hootsuite with Nadit here. So my question about Hootsuite is Hootsuite, uh, which as uh, Nadita just mentioned, was started right here in Vancouver, has over 18 million customers and over a thousand employees. Pretty impressive. What are some exciting initiatives for uh, that Hootsuite will be launching in 2022? This, this could be for like customers or for employees. Mm -hmm. Great question. Um, so I'll focus on the employee side just because we are growing and hiring lots. Um, so 2022 is phase two of our employee resource group launch. So doing lots of work to establish those, get volunteers internally and continue to grow our ERPs. Um, we are expanding our CSR program. So this includes our employee volunteering and donation matching. It's actually volunteer week at Hootsuite this week. So a lot of our owls are, yeah, we have a, about eight hours of um, paid volunteer work that we are um, encouraged to do. So I'll be doing actually a networking event tomorrow. Amazing. And then, uh, yeah, and we're continuing to partner with our global organizations that support DEI initiatives. So, as we obviously want to grow our company, we're making sure that we are still being inclusive and diverse in our hiring. Awesome. Sounds like a great initiative. Okay. All right. My next question is for Erin here. Um, for Spare Labs. Spare is also, uh, as you mentioned, a Vancouver startup with uh, over 50 or so employees. Your careers page lists some pretty impressive company opportunities like a work from anywhere policy and stock options, as well as professional development. Tell us some more about these initiatives. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Chelsea. Um, so the biggest thing is that we always want to make sure that we're listening to our employees. So when our employees tell us things that they want out of their benefits or um, any sort of program at the organization, team engagement, anything like that, uh, we take all of that information and that feedback and we compile it and understand kind of how we break that down and, and what is most important to our employees. And then we start working on those things. Um, so one of the things um, that people were really wanting right at the beginning stages, even before I started, we were 18 people when I started, and even before that, uh, our employees were saying, you know, wanting equity. Um, equity was something that was really big for people who were at the company when we were like five, six, seven people. Um, so that's really one of the areas that we started with when we started listening to our employees and, and seeing what employees wanted. Um, now, like you said, we're, we're 55 employees and we're hiring. We have seven more people starting next week. So we're, we're going to be into the 60s and then the 70s. So we're, we're growing as well. Um, and we're continuing to listen to our employees and what everyone's looking for. So we've upped our benefits plan um, in 2020. We, we increased the spending on our benefits plan, making sure that we um, increased our paramedical services, um, increased our um, counseling services. Um, we added an additional EAP. Um, we added a lifestyle spending account, which is basically money to spend on anything from education to transportation to childcare, really anything that helps you with your physical or mental well-being. And um, so we added that initiative because we had employees saying, you know, there were things that they wanted to do and there were the there were things that would make them feel a lot better. Um, and so we, we put some money into that as well. So um, stay tuned for some other things that we are going to be doing next year. We're doing our annual OKRs right now for the people team. So we've compiled a whole bunch of things again of what our employees are really looking for. Um, and we'll be putting those into practice for, for next year with our OKRs and, and developing some of that uh, has to do with training. <laughs> that's fantastic Erin that's really cool all right I've got a question here for Sarah at Traction on Demand um, last year Traction on Demand was named the fourth best workplace in Canada wow uh, that's really amazing uh, tell us uh, some more about your company culture and what your employees appreciate about working for Traction on Demand yeah, for sure. It is exciting. Um, I could probably just speak to the reasons why I like to work at Traction. Um, and so 
um, they kind of fall into like three main buckets. The first one is really the people, um, the people in the community that we're building here. I started in January and like every single person I've met is just so welcoming and like friendly and just genuinely themselves and like open to meeting new people and taking the time to get to know each other like outside of work. There's a really cool initiative that we have at Traction called Donut Pals. Um, and so Slack kind of automatically pairs you up with an individual at Traction and then you set up 30 minutes to have a coffee or like in the past they used to like send people actual donuts and then you have a conversation just getting to know people outside the organization. And what that's made me realize is that no matter where you are, what your position is, like it really feels like everybody's working towards a common goal together. And I find that super inspiring. Um, the second piece that I'll mention is really the values. Um, for those of you that uh, don't know, Traction on Demand was one of the first hundred companies to get certified as a B Corporation. Um, so B Corps um, are a new kind of company that balance their profit with people initiatives. And so really kind of bringing to the core of who we are, sustainability initiatives um, and social impact. We're really, really lucky to have a team that drives a lot of those initiatives for us, whether it's like you know, a volunteer initiative or, or donating or really just creating a platform for people and Tractionites to have meaningful conversations. Um, that's a piece that I value quite a bit with, with regards to why I joined Traction and why I'm here. Um, and the last thing I'll mention uh, with regards to our culture um, is the working conditions. Uh, it's super important nowadays, especially that people are working from home. It's actually kind of harder to find balance, but um, We've always had a flexible work environment, but in October, like HR and our people team formally rolled out um, some really cool initiatives like Flex Day Fridays, Day in Lieu, um, like a phased retirement, work from abroad from your home country, uh, like baby benefits, um, working from abroad from one of Traction's offices. So lots of really, really cool initiatives that I think make a difference in terms of attracting talent and also retaining talent. Amazing. I, I love the donut pals you said. Yeah. That sounds like so much fun and a great way to meet people in the company that maybe you haven't met yet because ever, you know, so so many of us are working remotely. Really cool. Totally. All right. I've got another question for uh Naditza. So Hootsuite has offices in the US, Europe, and Australia. What do employees love about working for Hootsuite here in Vancouver and across the board? Yeah, uh, I mean, I can speak to conversations I've had and then, of course, myself. Um, I think a lot of it right now does have to do with flexibility on where and when people work. So just being conscious of what's happening in the world and making sure that we're being inclusive. Um, our general focus on DEI is something that candidates ask about in every interview, if not every other interview, and just wanting to know what we're doing. Um, I think social media is just speaks for itself like it's a ever-changing landscape we move so quickly we we have to pivot and it's fun um so a lot of people just love working in the social media space um and then something that i always talk about is like the canadian company piece i know that all three companies here are canadian which is amazing but i would <laughs> talk about that it's just the culture the people like as much as we're a global company we really try to maintain that canadian Kind of guiding principles mentality and it does really radiate throughout the company globally that's that sounds wonderful so even if so, uh, you know somebody working at hootsuite abroad they'll get that canadian taste yes in, in all the stories all the excuse me <laughs> <laughs> love it love it all right uh back to aaron here i've got a question uh for spare labs uh, what's 2022 looking like in terms of company growth and new opportunities for customers as well as employees? This this could be like social or professional initiatives. Great question. Um, we have some super big news that we're going to be releasing in the next couple of weeks here that I can't release right now, <laughs> but there's news coming and it's very exciting. Um, but the things that I can share with you today are the fact that we are going to be doubling in size next year. So we're going to be hitting at least 90 employees. Um, that's the goal till the end of the year. Um, currently, we're doing some talent planning for departments. So we don't ex have exact numbers yet. But in January, we'll have some exact numbers of where we're hoping to grow and what departments we're hoping to grow uh, the most next year. Um, so stay tuned for that as well. Um, 
I did mention on the last question, training, uh, we are planning on rolling out a training and professional development program in-house. And um, so we're creating some content right now, or should I say curating some content right now um, on what we're going to roll out for some learning and development uh, and training initiatives. So um, I'm really excited about that. It's something that I'm really passionate about personally. I love growth and training. Um, it's also something we're really passionate about as an organization. Um, one of the kind of major philosophy philosophies that comes from the founding team at Spare um, is that every person needs to be growing and developing every day so that us as an organization, we can grow and develop every day and we can continue to innovate and move forward um, and grow at the pace and the rate that we're growing at. Um, because if our employees are stagnant and, and our employees don't have the ability to stretch and grow and, and learn and make mistakes, um, then we're not going to as an organization. So that's something that's really deeply embedded in the organization is that learning and growing, um, which is why I'm so, so excited to be rolling out um, some big new training next year. Ooh. Wow. Sounds, sounds like Spare is pretty busy and super excited to hear about your new, uh, secret news coming out soon. This will be like in the, in the next month or so. In the next couple of weeks. Yeah, okay, definitely. Okay. So we'll Put a Google soon. alert on for Spare Labs Vancouver. You'll hear some <laughs> big things. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be staying tuned myself just to, just to hear what it's all about. All right. Uh, last question here for Sarah. Uh, Traction on Demand is partnering with the Manitoba government um, to provide training to 100 new hires who will be employed at your new Winnipeg office opening in 2022. Are there any big projects like that occurring elsewhere in Canada or maybe in BC? Yeah, really good question. So we're kind of still mid project with uh, Winnipeg. So currently to date, like our first cohort started in May and we've hired 53. Um, so the goal, yeah, is to be to hire 100 by next September 2022. So still lots of work to be doing there. Um, in a similar capacity, um, as part of like our small town initiative, um, we're going to be partnering with Selkirk College in Nelson uh, to be part. Yeah, we have. I went really there. <laughs> oh, like to to that college. Yeah, I went to that college. Yeah, <laughs> I'm from the Amazing. originally. Yeah. So <laughs> We actually have a beautiful, like, renovated office in Nelson for traction. So you'll have to check it out. <laughs> That's so are exciting. From, are you from Nelson? I'm not from Nelson. I'm from Castlegar, where the, the main Selkirk College campus is. Oh, cool. Yeah, but Nelson's a really cool town if, if you've never been there. It's on the bucket list. But yeah, I guess um, part of the initiative is really to be kind of create similar to what we're doing in Manitoba is like creating mm -hmm. tech jobs where they might not otherwise exist. And so having partnerships with schools and colleges is really a, an opportunity for us to kind of build some of the professionals we need in the Salesforce mm -hmm. ecosystem. Um, we're doing things like um, um, helping, like doing boot camps with like young students and teaching them how to code and stuff like that. And really kind of planting those like tech seeds and tech opportunities. Um, so that's something that uh, we're looking forward to doing as well and growing the Nelson office specifically. That's that's so exciting. Uh, great for traction on demand. Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> All right. So that was the last of my my questions for the three of you. So I will move over to our pitch event next. Um, so for this pitch event, um, this is open for our job candidates here today. And uh, the rules are and I'll post the rules in the chat um, in the chat. You're going to type your name your location, your area of expertise, and your years of experience. And then on a first come first serve basis, I'm just gonna pick the first three people who type this information into the chat box. And I'll invite you to come on screen to pitch yourself in 30 seconds. So in 30 seconds, you're, you're just gonna talk about yourself. You could talk about like your previous work experience or what you're looking for, or if you're a student, you can talk about your studies and some of your accomplishments, but all in 30 seconds. And the winner, I will decide after the event, the winner will receive 30 minutes of resume consultation from me and I'll follow up um, to the winner in an email after the event. So feel free to type in your name, your location, your area of expertise and years of experience into the chat. And I will invite you to come on screen. So don't be shy. Uh, this is a great way to practice those, you know, rusty public speaking skills. 
and uh, and and show off some of your talents to our guest panelists today. Why don't we we get started with Simona? Simona, why don't you come on screen here? You can unmute yourself. Hi, nice to meet you today. Hello, nice to meet you too. You're <laughs> our first brave speaker. So <laughs> we're excited to, to hear your pitch about yourself. Thank you. Uh, I haven't done it this in a while, so <laughs> I'm excited. So hello, my name is Simona. I'm a sales support coordinator at True Earth, a zero waste startup. And it's great to be here today. I have a background in customer service sales, and I'm also a certified Salesforce and HubSpot administrator. I have over two years of experience uh, with helping teams solve their problems in a CRM environment. And also, I love working with Salesforce and learning new skills on Trailhead. And my biggest focus right now is on passing my uh, Sales Cloud Consultant certification, which is just behind the corner. And I'd like to find a full-time Salesforce administrator job in the a, in a near future. That's All it. right, very cool. Simona, thank you so much for sharing your pitch with us today. That was great. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we've got another brave speaker here. Sarah, do you wanna jump on screen here? Um, you can unmute yourself and turn your camera on if your camera is working and share your pitch with our guest speakers today. My name is Sarah Skoczylas. I'm a Polish and Belgium national. In my youth, I uh, competed internationally as a gymnast. Then oh. I graduated from the law school in Belgium. And after that, I started my international career, which was always my aspiration. Initially in the aviation industry and mainly as um, um, kind of account management type of roles. Uh, and then I switched to medical device because of uh, opportunities. Uh, that came up and then I went uh, back closer to my degree and I was legal counsel for a medical device company um, and that was in several different countries especially with aviation I worked and live um, within um, Spain Switzerland uh, even Canada for a while uh, and now the last five years I have been in Switzerland and then I decided I wanted to open my horizons uh, more and um, seek uh, challenging personal and professional opportunities in Vancouver. So I left my legal hat in Switzerland <laughs> and now I'm um, looking into a career in the customer success, which really aligns uh, not only with I, what I love to do, but also with who I am. And I believe that success is when who you are aligns with what you do. So that's why why I'm very eager to start a career in this fascinating customer success field in Vancouver. Amazing, Sarah. And what an interesting background you've got. Thank you. Okay, we've got one more um, pitch candidate today. Uh, Yuhan, Yuhan, do you want to jump on screen here as well? Um, you can unmute yourself and turn your camera on if your camera is working. Hi, Yuhan, nice to meet you. Welcome. Oh, I didn't know, like when I'm typing something I'm supposed to present? Oh. Yes, this okay. is just for our, our pitch event today. So in 30 okay. seconds, yeah, this is a great opportunity, you know, to practice those public speaking skills and okay. uh, show show off your skills to our, can, uh, to our uh, panel speakers today. Okay, sure. Um, the reason I joined this event, um, sorry, I'm just in the office, there's some other people here. So that's why I turned my camera off. Um, so I work for the Work BC Vancouver South, and the reason I attend this event is kind of to see what kind of opportunities that um, you have here, so I can refer my clients over. Um, okay. Yeah. So I only um, joined this position like the, it, this is my second month here. My background was um, a product designer and customer care in the past ten years. And I guess pandemic gave me a chance to enter social service and that's why I'm here. So, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome you have. Well, hopefully you can recommend our event to, to your clients as, as you were saying. So thank, thank you for sharing uh, your story with us. Um, I was trying to ask, like, is there any email that I can send my 
client's resume over, but that was not answered. Oh, okay. We're gonna get to the the Q and A in a, in a couple minutes. Now that we've finished, Wonderful. The so we'll get to your question. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. So that's I'm gonna close the pitch event for now. Thank you so much uh, to you, Han, Sarah and Simona for being brave enough to speak. Um, I'm going to follow up with one of you and offer one of you a free 30 minute resume consultation with me. Um, I'll send an email after the, this event. So keep a, a, an eye on your email for an invitation from me. Okay, so now I'm gonna open up the floor to our audience Q&A. I see there have been questions coming in this whole time. So I'm just gonna scroll kind of back up to the top here. Um, I see, okay, I'm going to grab the first question that I see, which is from Verania. Verania, you had a question about how can we get informational interviews about a specific role that we are looking for. Um, and then I see that one has been, Sarah also answered that, but did anyone else have, um, some some ideas or some tips for Verania? I have um, one way for us specifically. We do have a blog post on our blog that actually goes through all of the steps that you should expect when applying to a position at Spare. Um, so we have the same uh, steps for each role. There is a phone interview with a talent team member, and there's an assignment, an initial manager interview, a final interview with multiple individuals, usually someone from the team, um, as well as like a two up manager. So either a VP or one of our founders or someone so that you could meet someone really from that leadership team. Um, and then we do references at the end and it goes through that entire process. So you know exactly what to expect anytime you're interviewing with us. Perfect. I, I hope that answers your question, Verania. Okay, we've got another question from Rosa, sent in at 324. Um, Rosa, did you want to uh, come on screen and, and ask your question to our panelists? Yeah, hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, so yeah, I have a question. Um, because of COVID, a lot of people just decided to then pursue a career in the tech industry and some uh, also with the um, with design and UX, how what would you recommend to those like job seekers that just have education and don't have relevant work experience? Probably they have like transferable skills and the education, but not like relevant uh, experience where they can demonstrate that they know how to do it. If they want to pursue a career with a company like yours or uh, what would be like the, the best way they can approach to it? Because they sometimes are very scared to apply, right? Like they are thinking like, nobody's going to hire me. I don't have enough experience. I don't know. Like I just have education. Nobody's going to give me that first opportunity. So you guys as like talent acquisition and recruiters, what will you tell these uh, job seekers to get in their mindset, to help them go out there and pursue it? Great question, Rosa. Anyone want to take a stab at that? I can start us off. Um, I've done a little bit of UX hiring at Hootsuite, very little, a couple of roles, but um, I definitely know that experience is, is a, a big part of it. Um, so what I would recommend is building some sort of portfolio, whether it's like pro bono or finding like clients that need some work done on a contractual basis just so you can build out a couple of different projects that you've worked on that exemplify what you've done in regards to UX specifically outside of that yes transferable experience is amazing so I think looking at what the key words are on the job description and really leveraging those throughout your interview process in your resume um, is super helpful because a lot of the job you know maybe UX designing, but there's also like aspects of teamwork and communication and stakeholder management. So really looking at what they're seeking outside of the UX specific experience and then leveraging that with experience that you have. And I would say apply, you have nothing to lose. I think it's, it's, <laughs> a, it's a crazy market right now. I think a lot of people are switching industries. You never know whose you know, resume, whose, hand, whose hands your resume will fall in. So I think it's, it's obviously easy to be discouraged, but 
I, I would say apply for anything that you think you're a fit for. All right. I, ho I hope that answers your question, Rosa. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right. The next question was Yuhan's question about, uh, I mean, contact email if, if they have clients to refer to, to the panelists uh, from Vancouver. Now, uh, I don't know if anyone's sharing, sharing their emails um, <laughs> um, with, uh, with job seekers, but I'm sure like you can add your, your contact, like your LinkedIn or uh, a preferred like email address for resumes um, here in the chat. So I'll, I'll leave that up to our panelists to decide how they prefer to be contacted. Um, so I hope that answers your question, Yuhan. So just keep an eye on the chat for, for um, some links coming in and some contact information. Okay. And Yuhan, um, just for us specifically oh. from Spare, um, we work really closely with WorkBC South. Um, so either Tamara or Harry will have my contact information. So you can, you can get in touch with me that way as well. Perfect. <laughs> Matt Schneider says, would be cool if the HR reps can interview these people on the spot so we can see how the HR people think. You know, that, that is a great idea and, and maybe I'll incorporate that into our, our next panel. <laughs> uh, thanks for the idea, Matt. Okay, um, let's see here. Uh, Mick Davis, did you have, uh, okay, no, you're putting in your information. I don't think that was a question. Uh, let's see here. Um, I believe Liana has her hand raised. Do you want to jump on screen here and ask your question? Okay, perfect. My name is Liana. I am a career services advisor for Lighthouse Labs, um, and we do web development and data analytics boot camps. So similar to Rosa, what she said, and like what you have seen, our boot camps are really for people who want to do like a career change. Um, and we graduate a lot of data analysts and junior web developers every month from our bootcamp programs. Um, and I was wondering from your HR perspective, what we're seeing is like, you know, our junior web developers and data analysts, they're competing with people who have maybe bachelor's degrees or master's. So when you're hiring, um, what is really the gap for, let's say, a grad that comes up from a bootcamp program versus a bachelor's degree or a master's? What's the gap there? And how can they really close in the gap to make their application more competitive? Great question. I can attempt to answer this one just because I've only recently started to hire for software developers. Um, and maybe this is a me thing, but I haven't been taking a look at any education. Like I'm really going off of working experience. So for me personally, and I don't know if this is across the board, but I, I, I like to see the co-ops. Um, I think that's what makes people stand out and having worked with similar languages, have taken like ownership of projects, people that are eager to learn. Um, and I think upon interviewing, what makes people stand out is like why they're applying to us versus another company and what they know about us. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's as far as I can get into on the gap there, but maybe somebody else can I think I would agree with you that it's not so much about the education, um, more so about like, yeah, how can you sell yourself um, as a candidate? <clears throat> what are you bringing to the table? What have you done? Being able to speak about it. And then similar to the UX, like, do you have a GitHub? Is there a link that you can share of like code and projects and things that you've kind of taken ownership of? If you don't necessarily have that experience, um, that's, I would kind of, yeah, definitely agree with that. And then to, to build, on some of the other questions as well that we've had with like junior roles and like, what do you do to get your foot in the door? Um, I would say like networking is, is really, really important. Like someone was asking about informational interviews, but have them like reach out to people that work at the companies that you want to work at um, and have those conversations because most organizations have really important referral programs as well. So if you made a connection with someone um, like a genuine connection, like you might get referred in for a role when there is a junior position. So the networking piece and getting an understanding of the companies where you want to work at and what they look for and just being top of mind with folks that work there is like a huge, huge help. Um, so that's what I would add in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I hope, I hope that kind of answers your, your question there. Yeah. Thank you everyone. Awesome. Keep, keep the great questions uh, uh, rolling in. 
Um, I saw you, Han, you had your hand raised before, but now it's down. Did you, did you have a question? Um, I found my answer from the um, chat pad, so oh. um, thank you so much, though. Okay, perfect. All right, does anyone have any other, other questions for our panelists today? Okay, I guess I, I'll I'll go ahead and and ask one of my uh, my pre prepared questions. Um, are are any of the companies that are here today? Are you hiring, say, like more junior talent over senior talent, or are most positions looking for like both? Or, um, yeah, let us let us know like what's uh, what you're hiring for. We're probably hiring the fewest number of positions from the panelists right. here, honestly. <laughs> um, so right now, I think we have about 20 positions listed. Um, we're the full gamut, like sales, customer success, product, engineering. We're hiring a couple of people in each area. Um, I would say for the engineering roles, we definitely are focusing more on senior folks at the moment. Um, we have hired junior folks previously. We've hired senior folks previously. But what we're trying to do is really make sure that we're kind of pairing those together so that when we hire junior folks, they have more senior folks in the company that can actually bring them up to that level. So we're really focusing right now on getting in some of those senior engineering candidates um, to be able to support and develop and mentor some of the juniors. Um, and we've just done a round of promotions as well. So some of our junior folks have been promoted to intermediate and intermediate to senior. Um, and then once we have, we're like thinking probably two more senior staff or engineering manager, and then we'll open up a round for junior engineers. And then we'll um, continue to, to add on seniors and then we'll open up another round for juniors. So we kind of do it in um, like in, in combination with, with each other for the engineering team specifically. That's perfect. And I, and I think that gives a lot of hope out to um, uh, people who have seen your experience and and I know like at our at our last um, panel in October we we had a uh, a fellow on here who who was experienced he had over 30 years of experience and he was finding it hard to to find work in in the tech side of, of things so that's really great to hear that you're hiring senior for senior roles as well as for entry level junior junior talent what about uh, traction on demand or Hootsuite yeah, I think I like your your answer, Erin, in terms of like needing to balance it out, right? So typically from a talent perspective, you're looking at like a diamond. So you would want like a lot more intermediate and then like less like junior and senior. Um, so it obviously ebbs and flows. We just hired a ton of really junior folks in Manitoba. Um, but the goal really is that we want to be hiring junior folks, but also giving them giving intermediate folks an opportunity for coaching and development, but also promotion opportunity. And then similarly to um, to our senior folks. Um, so I would say it's always a balance and it kind of ebbs and flows for me personally, right now I'm hiring in the, in the sales sector and it is a little bit more like intermediate to senior, um, at the, this point in time. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And, and what about at Hootsuite? Yeah. Um, personally, mostly senior backend developers right now. Uh, I think across the organization, it's probably a blend. Like I can't speak to all the roles, but just knowing Hootsuite, it's likely, junior all the way to director roles. Okay, awesome, perfect. Okay, I think Rosa, Rosa, you've got your hand raised. You wanna jump on screen again and ask your question. Yeah, thank you. Um, I don't know, uh, what would you recommend or how do you see it for recruiting purposes if a candidate is following up on their application, like um, with an email or a phone call trying to see like uh, where are they in terms of the recruiting process? Is that something that, is that like a good practice that you would encourage them to do or it depends? What are your thoughts about it? I, I think that recruiters should definitely be telling you right from the start, like what the process is. A lot of people have it on their website right now as well. Like lots of companies will just tell you if you're entering a recruitment process, like this is what you ex could expect and this is how long it might take. Um, so I think that that's a, a definitely a best practice. If you happen to be interviewing with a company that's not um, communicated this information, then by all means, like ask and let them know what the timeline is. I don't think that that's, a, um, yeah, I think that that's a great practice to do. Although I do feel like we should let you know what's going on already. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I agree. I feel like it's definitely the job of the recruiter to keep that constant communication. 
but I do love when candidates also reply to me quickly and like it just it shows that they're interested so when I don't hear back from somebody for like two three days I'm like ooh, what's going on are they are they dropping out do they have other opportunities so I my favorite thing is like post interview I see an email from a candidate they let me know how the interview went, how they're feeling. So it saves me the time from reaching out to them. And I obviously know that they're still, still super interested in us and that they thought the interview went well. Nice. Yeah, I love a good follow-up. That's uh, that's big for me. Um, <laughs> I, I definitely agree. Like recruiters should be keeping in touch with you. But post-interview, just like, hey, could you please send another thanks to the hiring manager? I had a really good interview. I specifically liked this part of it. I'm feeling really good about it. Thanks. That's all you need. Awesome. Great tips. I, I hope that answers your question, Rosa. Yeah, okay. totally. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, we've got a question from uh, Tajinder. Tajinder, did you want to jump on screen and, um, and and ask your question? Yep. Are you guys able to awesome. see me? Yes. Nice background. <laughs> you look like you're in a very tropical place. Oh, geez. I don't even know what my background is. Uh, we don't use <laughs> Zoom whole lot. We use Teams. Uh, but my main question is um, with when it comes to junior positions uh, here at uh, Group Health, we're noticing it's, it's been a challenge. Um, we're noticing certain trends where people are usually not really prepared when we, you know, schedule these phone screens, they choose a time we use um, a tool called Calendly. So it just gives them a glimpse of our calendar. They choose the times that we call them, whether it's bilingual or unilingual customer service rep role. Um, and they have no idea where we're calling from. Um, and just even beyond that, they haven't really done any research on the company or location. And so you kind of spend the first bit providing information to them. So I'm wondering to, to everyone that's on this call, what are some of your challenges? Are, are you guys most noticing any trends? Uh, is there high demand from, you know, taking on a remote role versus hybrid or even in the office? Um, that's kind of what we're noticing, especially with very, very junior positions. Very interesting question. Um, can anyone speak to that? Um. Oh, sorry, Nadia. Rock, paper, go ahead. scissors. <laughs> go ahead. I can go next. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll first. go first. Maybe you can catch it. Um, yeah, thanks so much for your question, Tijijer. Um, So for us, I think my perspective at least is like, it's the recruiter um, who's going to prepare you for the interview. I have kind of like an agency recruitment mentality where I go into it as trying to prepare my candidates as best as I can for that interview, whether it's an interview with me or an interview with a hiring manager. But I always put all of the information that they're going to need for that interview in the email um, when I'm setting up that interview. So making sure my full name is in there, making sure, mm -hmm. of course, my email address is in the calendar invite, um, the company name, and then here's more information on what we're going to chat about today, make sure the link is really clear, make sure that there are links to other parts of our careers page as well. So um, we do a link to our blog post that shows like what you can expect from each step. Um, and then we also do links on like what is microtransit because most people are not coming from the transit space. So they have no idea where we fit into how transit works. So we actually have a blog mm -hmm. post on that as well. So candidates can come prepared with all of the information. Um, and I really like getting candidates excited about what we're doing before they even get on the phone with me. So I'm like sending information, learn more about us. This is what we're doing. That's really cool. This is a brand new thing that we've just released and making sure that they're already excited when they're jumping in on that call. Um, so that's something that I really feel passionate about and, and I get excited about supporting mm -hmm. candidates in, in having those conversations and making sure that they're prepared for that. I have a follow-up question to that, but how would you balance that? Say you have 60 plus roles, right? Where you, for each role you have to filter through sometimes over 500 applicants. And, you know, and with, with ourselves, I work along with my colleague who's also on this call. We, it, it's a battle. It's a, it's a difficult balance between being, I guess, being able to provide that amount of information to over, sometimes we're doing more than 10 phone screens a day. We don't have enough capacity to be able to, almost spoon feed, I'm going to use that terminology, spoon feed the information, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, and then that's one portion. How do you really balance that when you have so many 
um, positions on that you're looking to fill. But at the same time, you know, do, is, is there any concern that you guys may experience where if these people are so unprepared, how would they, how would they you know, translate that into the role that they're going to end up in? Yes, it, I totally understand getting them excited about what the company is doing, you know, talking about our experience and then, you know, uh, what, what the hiring managers are looking for. I totally get that. But is, I have a concern where they don't really have that basic understanding of even which company, which role they're applying to. Um, so I, and I'm saying this, especially for the more junior customer service rep roles. And are you guys noticing that people are just hitting the apply button? <laughs> Because I feel like, and, and we're working with multiple agencies and when we're chatting with them, this is one common feedback that we get. Um, so I'm just wondering, how do you balance that when you have so many positions? Yeah, great I, question. I would say automation, right? Like, I don't know if you have Calendly, like if it's a free we version, do. if it's That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so I would, I would, I would add, like, I, I'm all about transparency yeah. as well. Like similar to what Aaron said, I'm all about, here's your information this is what I want you to read before we chat and I'll hold candidates accountable. Like if someone comes through and they said, I've been really busy, I haven't had a chance to read up yeah. on the company. I'm like, let's reschedule. Like, I'm, I really like your experience. I think it'd be a great fit, but something that we do evaluate on and that makes you stand out mm-hmm. is how much research has gone into this preparation. Okay. So I I've done that. And I've said like, let's chat another time. We schedule the call whenever you're prepared hiring managers will read these notes and I want you to look good in my notes. Um, yeah. But on the automation piece, mm-hmm. just adding it to your Calendly template. Like I know that you said it's a we lot of, that, yeah. yeah. So just adding all those links instead of having to manually send them to every candidate, 10 screens a day is insane. So just having it be in your confirmation and saying, this is who you're chatting with. Um, I think there's a way to send text messages through Calendly, mm-hmm. follow up emails. Like there's a lot of different functionalities that, provide a better candidate experience, but also again, holds candidates accountable to this is who you're interviewing. I like that. I like that. I think one thing that we don't have is perhaps a link to our about us page, whatnot. So we Mm. do have uh, information as to here's the role, here's the company and my name and my email address and whatnot. So if they need to reschedule, they can use that. Uh, But you're right. If we have that link to about us or link to posting, even for that matter, um, then they can't really say, sorry, I didn't have time because you follow that link to your schedule that call. Mm-hmm. I like that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Thanks for your question. I, uh, I see that Simona has got an important question for our, our panelists today. Simona, did you want to come on and uh, ask your question? Uh, so I'm just curious, what is the most important thing uh, that uh, you notice during an interview, especially for junior positions? Like, is it uh, the confidence level or is it just the experience or or what is it? I'm curious, <laughs> thank Great you. Great question. And I think that's actually an important question that uh, many of you here today are probably wondering yourselves. <laughs> I think for me, it's the, like the storytelling piece um, and being able to tell me about yourself. It's very simple, right? But tell me about yourself and tell me about your background. Like who is Sarah? Who is Chelsea? And have a story and have that you're kind of like elevator pitch, like ready to go in a way that's like engaging. And you've highlighted like some key nuggets that you're hoping like will resonate as it pertains to our company and and the job. Um, But to me, that's super important. It's just like the storytelling piece about like, in a nutshell, who are you? What's your background? Why are you here? And to have that kind of ready to go um, is is really important, not just for junior roles, but like across the board, I would say. Awesome. And and, that. Sure. Yeah, sorry. Do you want to go ahead? No, you go ahead, Nadisa. (laughs) It's all you. Um, I was going to say, I think for me, because of how high volume junior roles are, aside from obviously a good resume and one that's informative enough with enough detail that I can know exactly what you've done and can move you forward, getting into the actual interview, I I think it's important having, if this is someone that applied, I want to know why you applied to Hootsuite, right? Like I understand the candidates are active, but I think it's so important for junior roles, especially where like anything that you do that's above and beyond is going to make you stand out why us what research have you done why social media like all those things like I'm like yes 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 moving you forward um just that preparedness and I know that it's it's tough to interview right it's a skill you have to talk about yourself but 
I know that when I first interviewed earlier on in my career, like I'd sit in front of a mirror, I'd videotape myself, I'd practice my answers. And you can tell a well-prepared, well-spoken, can really follow like the star methodology, get to the point candidate than ones that are just interviewing for the sake of interviewing. Yeah, I 100% agree, Nadisa. Um, if you can show me or tell me why you're interested in the company, um, I'm 100% there for it. I mean, there are different skills, hard skills that you need for each different position, but across the board, as a 55 person company, um, you're going to be doing a whole bunch of different things. You're not going to be specifically doing like the this list of five different tasks that we've put on the job posting. There's going to be a whole variety of things that you're going to be doing and interest and excitement in that is something that kind of like drives you to do more and do extra and give ideas and give feedback. So that's huge. Awesome. Great, great tips. Um, while we're waiting for more questions to roll in, I have a question um, and, and that's posed to all three of you. What are some um, tips you can give our, our job candidates here today on how to stand out in their resumes? What, what makes a resume kind of stand out, pop out to you from the get-go? Um, I would say not too much text, like something that's easy to read. Um, I know it can be counterintuitive because some people, some applicants are like, I'm going to put all, literally all of the information, all of my experience on this, but, but it makes sense if you kind of like filter out and have a resume for, I know it's tedious, but it makes a huge difference. Like have a resume for each job that you're applying for, unless it's like exactly the same job, but it really makes a difference to really kind of highlight the experience that you have as it pertains to the job you're applying for and then have it just like super clean and simple that I can read from like left to right like leave the 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 graphs and anything complex like just remove that you really like your name it's like the simpler keep it simple <laughs> keep it simple I think is the keep best way simple. about it and, and to the point um and I think that's what stands out because if it's easy to read I can catch the nuggets of information that I want and then action on, on a candidate so um that's what I would add Perfect. Great tips, Sarah. Thanks. Um, any other tips from Aaron or Nadisa? I agree. Keep it simple, concise. I'm all about that. I know that um, a lot of uh, companies or, or career coaches and things like that will will say add um, all of the information that's in the job posting at the bottom in like clear or white text or things like that um, just to kind of get by the ATS but I think the biggest thing is like actually take what's in that job posting and what you've learned about that job and translate that into transferable skills for each role that you've done so that instead of just bypassing the ATS you're actually attracting the recruit recruiter saying, these are the things that we're looking for. This person matches those things exactly. And I'm reading that. Um, and it's easy for me to read that. And then we can move forward because we're, we're skimming. We're looking at so many resumes every single day. So the easier you make it on us, the um, more positive feeling we have towards you. <laughs> I can also add to that and to echo what Sarah said, that attraction, a human reviews every single applicant. That goes same thing for Hootsuite. And sometimes we see an upwards of like three, 400 applicants for one role. So imagine us as recruiters trying to get through these. The simple ones do stand out. Wow. So yes, I will echo that. Keep it simple. <laughs> um, I also like, I, I would never dismiss a candidate based on spelling mistakes, but double, triple check your resume. Mm -hmm. I think the, like the, the grammar, the, the spelling is so important. Um, so that's something I would add. It's all those little attentions to detail. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. the last piece that hasn't come up and not everybody's comfortable with so social media, but I'm a huge like LinkedIn fan. Mm -hmm. um, so if someone has their LinkedIn connected to their application, I'll always go check it and I will explain why, but it's because everybody's LinkedIn profile looks the same, right? All the information is laid out mm -hmm. in the exact same way. So I prefer to view it in that capacity because each resume is so different. Some people have their education, some people do the skills right. and it's like, you're basically just looking for information. You're looking for skill set. you're looking for experience. And LinkedIn, where is I find is smart and better than a resume is that it's always the information I'm seeking is always at the exact same place uh, for every single candidate. So if you're comfortable with having a LinkedIn, I think it only just adds to your application and you can have some fun with it. Like you can, again, like go back to the storytelling piece, but like 
add things to your, your LinkedIn profile that really tell your story and that speak to like your personal professional brand. Um, and I think that really supports an application uh, tremendously. Okay, great. So that's a, a tip that everyone here can take away today. Check out your, your LinkedIn profile and see how you can uh, brush it up a bit. Okay, uh, Benny here had a great question. Benny, did you wanna come on and uh, ask your question? Yes. Um, hi, Chelsea. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> uh, I had a question about cover letters. Mm -hmm. uh, should a candidate include a cover letter? I heard that you've got uh, such a volume of uh, resumes to go through for every position. So should a candidate even include a cover letter? Great question. Yeah. <clears throat> I used to be embarrassed to answer this question, but I'm hearing it more and more often. The answer is no. <laughs> I'm getting more confident in this as a recruiter, hearing other recruiters at other panels say it. Um, no, I think there's way too much effort that goes into cover letters that can be spent on LinkedIn and on like connecting with people on LinkedIn and sending out messages. My one sort of um, time where I would support a cover letter is if you're making a career change and you want to tell that story of why and it would make it makes sense and it adds to your story then yes but again you could also add that to your linkedin and that would be a lot easier to read in like your about me bio okay so that... let me be the only one that says no. <laughs> it's the same is, is that the agree. same standard for spare and traction on hand Agreed. Or if you, if for example, like you're moving to Canada and it's like, it's not obvious that like you like have a work permit or whatnot, if there's something you need to explain that isn't obvious from your resume, then by all means, like feel free to attach a cover letter, but keep it like, honestly, a paragraph. Um, if you are going to submit a letter, make it, make it very, very short. <laughs> Yeah. What about like gaps in somebody's resume? Would that need to be explained in, in a cover letter, say? Or is that not, not that important? No, I think if the person has like the experience and the skill set and, and the aptitude that we're looking for, that we want to learn more, like that's something that we can cover in a phone interview. It's just like, hey, I noticed you added this job here. Like what, what was the reason for blah, blah, blah. So I think that that's totally fine. It's just to leave it to the phone interview. If the candidate is the right fit um, and we mm -hmm. want to learn more, we can do that in a phone interview. Okay, perfect. Okay, we have a uh, Benny, and your hands raised again. Do you have another question? Uh, no, that was just uh, the one time when I had. Uh, okay, just just uh, just a wave now. Yeah. Okay, does anyone else have any more questions for our panel speakers today? Any any other questions? You can feel free to raise your hand or pop them in the chat um, while we're waiting for some more questions to come in. I've got a couple other questions here for our panel speakers. Um, what are some trends that you can predict in your industries? It might not be an easy question to answer. Hopefully not another TikTok <laughs> that we have to integrate <laughs> with. <laughs> I honestly, I think with social, it's just going to be like the next exciting thing and, and mm -hmm. we're going to have to work on our end to like integrate APIs right. and do all that technical backend stuff and figure out how to add them to our Hootsuite <laughs> dashboard. Um, but I obviously think social media is just going to grow and grow and grow. And yeah. it's really exciting. Um, and that means more complex and exciting product for Hootsuite. Ooh. All <laughs> right. What about for, for attraction on demand or spare? Any any trends you can uh, predict in, in your industries? Go or even for your company? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would say like there's a huge like talent shortage. We're definitely like in a very niche kind of space in the Salesforce ecosystem. So not only for, for partners such as Traction, like there are other implementation partners. And I think the talent shortage is very, very real in certain areas, specifically like marketing cloud actually. And so there's all kinds of different um, technologies that are just super niche. And I think we are having um, some difficulties, like even on the implementation side, but our clients looking for Salesforce talent as well. So I think all we can do is really kind of evangelize a career in the Salesforce ecosystem, uh, promote like doing trailheads and badges and kind of upskilling and having programs that might enable individuals to kind of uh, gain the skill sets as it pertains to, to Salesforce, because uh, it is quite niche. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, hopefully lots of people will get inspired to, to pursue a career in this space. So. Okay, cool. And, and for Spare, anything that 
stands out to you in the future? I know you've got your big your big news coming out soon. Big news coming for Spare. <laughs> but I think um, from an industry perspective, just my favorite story always to share is when I originally interviewed at Spare, my now boss, our COO, Josh, brought me to the window of our eighth floor office. And I looked down at all of the vehicles on the street. And the idea was the reason that those vehicles are there is because public transportation isn't as effective or as efficient as people driving in. And paying for parking, paying for gas, insurance, et cetera. And we want to make public transportation the best option for people, no matter where you are. So um, we're working with our partners, with transit agencies to be able to develop that option and make that a, a, a sustainable and efficient, effective option for people and um, to get to where they need to go. So I think there are huge, huge changes happening in the transportation industry right now. I mean, with Uber and Lyft, et cetera, coming in however many years ago, um, transportation, public transportation is now kind of catching up to, to what those players are doing, um, which is amazing. Um, and I think that you'll see some huge changes in the public transportation space and making that yeah more sustainable, more effective, more budget friendly, economic um, for all riders. And I'm very, very excited about that. Awesome. Well, that is very exciting. Okay. Uh, do we have any more questions for our panel speakers? Um, I guess I do have another question about hybrid work. I, I mean, this is, this is the norm these days, you know, work from home, going to the office, a little bit of both or one or the other. Um, and in terms of, of, of the companies present here today, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, is hybrid work here to stay uh, for your companies or is the, is the shift going to come in the future for everyone just to ret return to work uh, instead of working from home? Uh, what, are your, what are your thoughts on this? I personally love the hybrid model. Um, I was actually really happy that Traction didn't call it remote forever. Um, I think there's definitely something to be said about the people and building community within an organization that you work at. So what we're doing is um, they're calling it like there's three different options. So like there's your everywhere office, which is obviously your work from home. Um, they're converting kind of like all our office spaces to centers is what they're calling them. So where you would have like large planning sessions. Um, and then the third really kind of like innovative um, option that we're offering to attraction nights is called shops. Um, so shops is uh, something super cool that's happened in the last like few weeks, but basically we're partnering up with local breweries or coffee shops that don't need their brick and mortar space all day. So we would kind of uh, support them um, and in exchange support part of their rent and in exchange have um, designated mm -hmm. traction workspaces there. So it allows us to kind of, um, you know, be involved in the community, but also it involves it, it, it lets us kind of meet new people and, and be in person in a space that's not your office. Um, but also the um, the initiative kind of tying back to um, sustainability is that mm -hmm. we have a goal of being carbon neutral in the next year. So the goal oh, is to wow. have these shops in high density traction night areas so um, we know that people can just walk or bike there and just reduce the carbon footprint mm -hmm. of our company so that's really really uh, innovative something that um, I find super inspiring. That sounds really cool and, uh, and you know if you're partnering up with coffee shops it's a win-win for everybody because everyone loves you know hot beverage <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah Nadita, Aaron any any thoughts on the hybrid work model? Uh, yeah, we've gone hybrid. Um, mm -hmm. So just really giving people the option, the flexibility, and I feel that's the best way. I think people should have the option to either wake up and get dressed and go to work or <laughs> not. Um, so I just, yeah, I think it, it's here to stay for Hootsuite, especially given the number of offices that we have. Um, we've obviously been looking at like rules and regulations across the, the globe and figuring out how many people can, can go in. Um, mm -hmm. So people have been going in and it's picking up, mm -hmm. but it's um, at everyone's discretion. Awesome. Okay. That's good to hear. So yeah. hard. It sounds flexible. Sorry, Erin, you were going to say. I was just going to say, we did basically the same thing. Like April, 2020, we were like remote optional, completely <laughs> optional to come in or not. Um, we did open the office back up in the summer of 2020 with a cap and um, all of the regulations and things like that. Um, we're starting to loosen that a 
bit more now um, so people can come in whenever they like. And we're also starting to open up um, hub offices in uh, like high density spare uh, areas. Um, so we're looking at one in Toronto. Um, we have a few people now in Calgary, um, a few more people in Montreal. So we'll be looking at adding some hub offices so that Ooh. more people can go in um, if they choose to, rather than working remote 100% of the time. So that's exciting. Th that's not part of your big news that you're going to share, right? No. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I, I think there aren't any more questions uh, coming in um, uh, this time. So I think I'm just going to start to wrap up this panel uh, a few minutes early today, uh, unless somebody has a, a question they, they want to ask last minute. Otherwise, uh, Aaron, Sarah, and Aditza, it was so wonderful to have you three join our panel today and to hear your thoughts and your expertise and, and your words of wisdom for our job applicants on how to improve their interview skills and resumes. So thank you so, so much for joining us today and taking the time out of your busy schedules. I know Mondays uh, are, aren't the easiest days to, to join a panel. And that's why we've actually, in the new year, we've changed our panels from Mondays to Tuesdays, just, just to make that easier on everybody because mon Mondays are Mondays can be tough sometimes. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today. Um, for everyone who's here, please uh, check out the, the links that uh, Sarah, Aaron, and Nadisa have shared in the chat for their hiring pages. And don't forget to join us next month on December 13th for our next um, hashtag uh, Hire Me 2021 uh, guest speaker panel series featuring uh, Innovate BC, Commit, and Pocketed. Um, and uh, lastly, you can always shoot me an email if you have any questions to events at bcjobs.ca. I'm always happy to, to answer any questions that you may have, or if you have a resume that you want me to, to look over and give some feedback, very happy to do that. So thank you all for joining us and see you next time.